Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community, Oceania Hundoke, together with Reverend Yutaki Yamada. Today is Saturday, the 30th of March, 2024, or the 21st of February in the 12th year of Tongu Kuk. Thank you all for coming, and uh, let's begin with a bow to our true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind, Chanji Jampunenge Kyumbe. Karo. And uh, let's recite our family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajom Mense Chil. Chanilguk Juin, Uri Kajogun, Cham Sarangul Chunshimago, Ponyon El Tonga Yangul Den, Uyan and Sevhal Toyo, Simjom Muna Segel, Wanso Halkosil Mense Hanaida. Family pledge number seven. Our family, the owner of Chongil Group, pledges through living for the sake of others to perfect the world based on the culture of heart, which is rooted in the original lineage by centering on true love. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Chris Bruce if you could offer the opening prayer, please. Join me in prayer. Morning, Heavenly Parent, True Parents. I invite you into our lives this morning again. And uh, we're so grateful, Father, we're sitting here in this place and much of the world is in disarray. <clears throat> we know that you have a plan to restore this world. We know our True Mother and True Parents are desperately trying to keep the schedule to liberate and save as many people as possible. We know your expectations are high. So we want to try once again this, this to this day to do more than we did yesterday. We just want to invite you here today now. We hope you, everyone can be so inspired. We hope that each person can receive something that can change their life, one small piece towards you. I know that our true mother's calling even the elder sisters foundation members of our movement to renew their lives. So even at this late stage of many of our elder members, we can begin again. We can change. We can try to be a little bit better than we were before towards our true father's incredible goal of uh, self-perfection. So we just want to be with you today and uh, so grateful for this day. Thank you now. And I'm Chris and Debbie Bruce, sent to his family, Arjun. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, let's give a warm welcome to Reverend Yutaka as he shares this morning. So thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining today's morning. Okay. Today is the Saturday, and also now is uh, Easter week. So are we spending well? Uh, let's reflect the past week, and let's prepare for the next week. So each day is the precious time. Let's begin the today's also fundok. So I'd like to share some activity photo. So this is the yesterday we had the Chonshimon prayer. So during President Son's uh, presentation, actually also he... Uh, introduced our Australia, uh, actually heavenly Top Gun group, uh, but also uh, Sydney prayer was also there. So I captured these things. And this is a yesterday prayer. So thank you for joining and to come to the Sydney side. Uh, this is also uh, the great time we offer the sincere prayer together. And this is a New Zealand. Thank you, our New Zealand brothers and sisters. To your father prayer. This is also Marshall Island and this is the Solomon Island. And also uh, other brothers and sisters through uh, online YouTube Zoom. So thank you for your participation. We continuously put our heart and offer the Chonson. So Chonson prayer uh, become the way to connect to the spiritual world and directly connect to our heavenly parents and true parents. So let's continuously offer the prayer and chanson. 
And next, this is from Marshall Island. Uh, this is Devon Ito's uh, children or families. So this is also a great gathering. Thank you, Marshall Island, for your investment. This is also beautiful families. And next, uh, Solomon Island side, they are organizing the DP workshop. So we could see many young people come together and to learn the divine principle and the lectures. So you could see many young people gather together. I think this is the center and they are cooking together. So we could see the Solomon Island brothers and sisters. Let's pray continuously and also successful all workshop and raise up the future leaders. So each day is the precious moment. So let's do our best. Okay. And also Oceania newsletter issue 15 was already published last week or two weeks ago. Uh, I believe everyone already received, but if you didn't receive, please ask to the national leader and to receive this newsletter. And we can also see the all activity in the Oceania. So let's pray and support together. Okay, thank you. So today, uh, let's read the triple message, message from Chan sang -yeon, the life course of true men and women. Let's start. So Mrs. Barber, please. In your family, the way you should go as a husband and wife is clear. It is not important who is right or wrong. The person to lead the way is the one who loves God more. The other one must follow. If the husband is lagging behind and does not listen, give him a good kick. If he does not follow you, you simply have to go on by yourself. If you do not keep going, both of you will come to ruin, as will your children. First, you must avoid responding to your environment out of habit. Second, you must be proactive, continually taking action to spread God's love. A wife needs to live for her husband and a husband for his wife. Since a couple is originally meant to exist for the sake of God to fulfill his will, you need to work so that God can recover your tribe, your people, your nation and the world. We still have realms to liberate, even the spirit world and hell, to build God's kingdom. Yes, thank you. So in this paragraph, uh, there are a few important points. So let's see one by one. Father said, in your family, the way you should go as a husband and wife is clear. It is not important who is right or wrong. The person to lead the way is the one who loves God more. The other one must follow. So this is uh, also important message. Who is the center or subject in the family or in the couple? Sometimes people are saying husband is important or wife is important. Of course, both is important, but this father's message is giving the clear definition. What did he say? Who is the center? Who is the subject in the family? Father said, It is not important who is right or wrong. The person to lead the way is the one who loves God more. So if the person who loves God more, this person becomes the center, this person becomes the subject. So how to love God more than others? how that person can connect with God. These things become the standard. When we see the history, all history was read, almost centering on the man or male, and women was ignored for a long time. And in the couple, husband-wife relationship, originally those husband position and wife's position should be equal, but when we see the history, always man is standing the center or subject and women will follow. Or looks like sometimes women's position was ignored. So this is because of the result 
of Himapho. But now, Tirumada is sharing more about the mother part or heavenly mother part of God and also testifying. Our God is not only male figures. Our God is actually have also female figure and our parent. That's why through discovering or through uh, revealing this new truth, God is not only Heavenly Father. God is also Heavenly Mother side together as the parents. Through the things we can also share more to the people. God is the parents and our human beings, husband and wife, united together to be the uh, visible or the, the behalf of God or God's image between men and women. So this discovering is uh, important. That's why this message is important. Who should be the center? The person who loves God more. This person become the center. And next part, Father said, first, you must avoid responding to your environment out of habit. So we have to train by ourselves. And next part, second, you must be proactive, continually taking action to spread God's love. So the things also we have to effort. That's why when we receive the blessing or when we receive the grace from heaven, we should not keep these things for only for ourselves, but also to should spread to others, expand this blessing to others. So we should do, we should keep uh, efforting these points. Okay, please. When God created human beings, do you think he loved the man or the woman more? He loved the woman more. Men are God's dwelling place. Therefore, when men mature and reach adulthood, they want to command the world, travel around the universe, and win first place in everything. Men are more ambitious in this way. Women, on the other hand, do not think, I want to be the best in the world. Instead, in terms of their conjugal relationship, they are inclined to pursue one direction, love. They long for an environment of tranquility and a peaceful life. They do not relish competitive struggle. They rather want to love and receive love and to lean on someone. So they want to live where they can be part of a family, be secure, and cultivate intimate relationships. Woman was God's final masterpiece, and women have more capacity to receive love than men. Yes, thank you. This is also all the important words. So I will read again. When God created human beings, do you think he loves the man or the woman more. He loves the woman more. Men are God's dwelling place. Therefore, when men mature and reach adulthood, they want to command the world, travel around the universe, and win first place in everything. Men are more ambitions in this way. Uh, women, on the other hand, do not think I want to be the best in the world. Instead, in terms of their conjugal relationship, they are inclined to pursue one direction, love. So uh, men, man and woman, there are differences. Their father is mentioning this point clearly. Men try to be best in the world. They try to become number one, this kind, Man have this kind of nature. And how about, how about woman? Woman case is thinking and to try to create the harmony, a wish, the unity, more than division or more than struggling. Man nature is trying to go out, this kind of nature, but woman case and to try to unite the family in the family. So we could see 
each person or each uh, man and uh, woman has the different role or different values. So True Mother is now emphasizing about role of woman and also opening about the side of Heavenly Mother. So in order to become all human beings as brothers and sisters and family, the mother's love, how important the mother's love. So we can recognize and we can feel this point again. And also Father said, they long for an environment of tranquility and a peaceful life. They do not relish competitive struggle. They rather want to love and receive love and to lean on someone. So they want to live where they can be part of a family, be secure, and cultivate in intimate relationships. Woman was God's final masterpiece, and women have more capacity to receive love than men. So women is this kind of existence. So Father said, Woman was God's final masterpiece. So that much woman is the precious existence. Please. Art is something that enriches our life. This is why it is important to include the arts in children's education. Women also need to know how to develop an artistic sense towards their husbands how to treat them gently, and how to embrace them. This is actually even a more wonderful kind of art. Through the art of love, we can beautify our family and elevate it. I think this art is of great value in terms of its benefits. Having a family is not a bad thing. No matter how capable, in the end, a woman needs to return home. That is why women should marry. Yes, thank you. So we have to think about the role of woman and also the nature. When we see the current society, people is insisting or telling that the equalness between uh, men and woman and even kind of the concept of gender was going to be broken, or even the concept of family is becoming the confusing. But what is the original nature or original world? The men and women has the different nature, and each person was created in order to support each other or complement each other. That's why in this point, we should understand clearly the value of each genders and also the role. And we should emphasize this point. Because of human fall, this history became, or history uh, became the history of the man-centered history. That's why women was just follow or ignored. So those culture was established. Even now, when we see some country, there is this kind of tradition centering on men and women was still suffering. That's why, because of this, the uh, feminist movement was developed to against men and try to control men. But this relationship was not God's original culture or original situation, not Men and women is not created in order to compete each other, but they are created to support and complement each other. That's why when we see the society, this is the result of the fall. So we have to restore or return back to the original state. So we should understand first role or nature, and we should create a new culture centering on our heavenly parent and true parents. Please. In a marriage, 
If a husband caresses his wife with hands of true love, whether it is day or night, she always welcomes him. What is it that women are most shy about? They are shy about showing their breasts, aren't they? Men are similar in that they conceal their reproductive organs. But what happens when the two of you are alone? Do you still hide these things? No, you want to be open to each other. Before marriage, if a man touches a woman, it is a serious problem. Once you are married, that is no longer true. Even if you hide your private parts from each other before you marry, once you marry and love each other, it is not like that. In that way, you come to have one heart and become as one body. Yes, thank you. So, Father is talking about relationship between men and、uh, women. So, before or having, or before getting married, of course, men and women have to keep purity. That's why also God said, don't eat the fruit, don't see each other, and don't touch that. This is important to make some distance before marriage. If a man touches a woman, eat uh, 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 before marriage, if a man touches a woman, it is a serious problem. So, this is true. But how about after getting married? Father is talking about to open everything, respect each other, and love. Father said, once you are married, That is no longer true. Even if you hide your private parts from each other before you marry, once you marry and love each other, it is not like that. In that way, you come to have one heart and become as one body. So we should create this kind of the relationship. This is also the important things before and after. Before, of course, we have to keep, but even after, some person or some couple is continuously keeping the purity, even within the marriage. This is really a problem. So, after marriage, how to love, open, unite each other. So, this relationship, creating this relationship is essential. Please. The way of life as you seek true love. We human beings, Are born to travel through the world of love. We are born to travel in the universe of love. At the moment I inherited my mother and father's bloodline, I participated at the center of their love for each other. So I received love from the time I was conceived. My parents loved me as I grew in my mother's womb. During the months my mother carried me, I could feel her constantly. After I was born, my parents loved me. I was in the realm of my parents' love all the time I was growing up, when I went to school and then to college. A mother and father love their sons and daughters more than anything, and when they cannot provide for them the way other parents do, it causes them great pain. Yes, thank you. Father said, We human beings are born to travel through the world of love. We are born to travel in the universe of love. At that moment, I inherited my mother and father's bloodline. I participated at the center of their love for each other. So, this content is really the beautiful content. We were born in the love of parents, and we are Growing up under or inside of love of parents, and we are participating with this love relationship. So, this is the original relationship. And the husband and wife love each other, parents and child also love each other. If children can grow up under this kind of circumstances and receive love and participate in love, If this relationship would be continuing and how beautiful it is, husband and wife or father and mother love each other 
trust each other and parents trust children and parents love children. If children can grow up under this kind of parental love and how healthy environment or how healthy the children can grow up. But now those family ideal environment was lost. This message was, uh, this message looks like normal things or simple things, but now we could not find those kind of the relationship or environment. Husband and wife is fighting, a father and my mother is also fighting or finding the love from outside and also even doesn't have the real love toward the children or even family levels. That's why how many people are suffering in the society, how many young people or children are suffering without ideal parental love. So that's why True Parents is leading this family, true family movement and try to restore the original God's ideal culture in this place. Please. Only when the children have a son or daughter themselves can they say, now I know what my parents did for me. When the parents have to go away to work, leaving their children behind, do you think they sleep comfortably or spend their time peacefully? When you understand that their minds are always anxious and uneasy over their children, you will realize what amazing people your parents are. This is love. At around age 16, we are on the verge of maturity. Just a little later, around 18 or 20, we are ready to marry. This begins another cycle of love. We marry, and in the early years we have sons and daughters, and we love them. But when our children marry, we love our grandchildren. Yes, thank you. So likewise, parents love the children, and children will be growing up. So under these circumstances, children can be mature and children will prepare for new family. And they will get marriage and they will have uh, children. Then parents become grandparents and grandparents start to love the grandchildren. And this cycle of love will be continuing. Please. Grandfathers and grandmothers love their grandchildren even more than they do their sons and daughters. Those of you who know your grandmother, don't you receive more love from her than you do from your mother and father? If you ask what a grandmother's desire is, it is to cherish her grandsons and granddaughters. For the grandparents, Grandchildren in their home bring to mind images of the things they did from the time they were children until they were teenagers, when they married and when they had their children. They can review the entire course of their early life through their grandchildren. Yes, thank you. Parents become the grandparents and grandparents will have the grandchild. So this relationship is different with parents and child. And this feeling is different to love children or love grandchildren. So what do you think? Because I'm not yet grandfather, but I think some of you already became the grandfather and grandmother, right? When you meet your grandchildren, your feeling is same toward children or grandchildren or different. Can you feel your heart of love or deep depths of love, differences or not? So father is talking this grandparents love, grandparents and grandchildren in relationship. This is also great and also beautiful. Please. When we become grandparents or great grandparents, our lives start to branch out in many as many directions as we have descendants. These descendants will be interconnected in the love they inherit from us. The more there are, the greater the blessing. They are born from love, 
their lives flow forth through love. The course of life is the succession of generations according to the way of love. Undeniably, we are born for love. Yes, thank you. This is the final slide. I will read again. When we become grandparents or great-grandparents, our lives start to branch out in as many directions as we have descendants. These descendants will be interconnected in the love they inherit from us. The more they are, the greater the blessing. They are born from love. Their lives flow forth through love. The course of life is the succession of generations according to the way of love. And deniably, we are born for love. So how it is. First generation, second generation, and third generation. And the number of children or number of grandchildren. So depends on the number. Continuously, the scale of family is expanding and is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Parents love children. Grandparents love children and grandchildren. And children respect parents and respect grandparents and love grandparents. Through this love relationship, automatically the love culture would be established. And when God see this kind of expansion or development of culture of love, how happy he is and how beautiful it is. So this was God's original hope and wish. And God wanted to live together, stay together with this kind of the love environment. And we also try to fulfill this ideal. So today our uh, Pundok message is talking about especially the love relationship between parents and child or grandparents and grandchildren or more than that. This is looks like simple things. People is wishing the things, but actually it's not easy to create this kind of environment. Parents and child, grandparents and grandchildren, or third generation, or three generation, or fourth generation living together because of the environment, because of the social issue, because of also the result of foreign concept. So how we can deconnect or align with God's original hope and will and create the ideal culture. This is one of the important role and direction. That's why each day or each moment or now three parents try to conclude and create a new start. This culture is actually the culture of original God's will. So we totally learn and also unite with our heavenly parents and three parents. And we are the one, we should be, become the one who create and inherit this culture together. So this today's message was also a beautiful message. Let's also inherit well and apply in our daily life and let's create that great moment. Thank you for joining today's Morning Hundoke. Today is a Saturday and also end of the week. Please have a good time and have a great day. Thank you very much once again. Kamsamida. Kamsamida. Thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Taka, as always, uh, to really help us in the morning to uh, understand uh, your uh, uh, heart connected to our true parents. So uh, I was you know, reflecting, as always, uh, on all the readings and and yeah, this is always our favorite topic because it's the the topic of heaven and and the favorite topic of our true parents, and that is all to do with love. And uh, yeah, it starts off with you know who yeah, it's nothing to do with right or wrong. It's whoever loves God more. It takes the center position. It really is. Uh, yeah, that's our desire. Yeah, to to be the ones that can love and receive love and 
And uh, yeah, uh, when Father you know, said, yeah, who does uh, uh, God love uh, most? Yeah, he loves women more. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I was happy with that. Also a little, I suppose, jealous being a man. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but that's okay. Uh, uh, and then I, I thought that that just sort of highlighted exactly what Father said. He said, man wants to be the best, so he treats everything as a competition. And I was uh, thinking of when I was growing up, yeah, uh, I, I, I loved, you know, uh, competition. But a uh, woman wants more love. You know, uh, woman, women have more capacity to receive love. And then I thought, oh. Wow. Uh, and uh, as uh, said, that woman, our women are God's final masterpiece, and that's true. You know? uh, Eve was the last to be created and, and said, very good. Uh, and uh, I, I reflected on that. I'm thinking uh, uh, everything was good, 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 and then it, it created us and said, very good. But then I think the focus is on on the woman because she was the very last, and not 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 necessarily the man is very good, but definitely uh, women are very good. Uh, and then it you know, gave us uh, some things to be uh, concerned about when we're thinking in our life of faith and our life of love, and you know, not to respond you know, to the world to the environment out of habit. Yeah, you know, because we're just repeating basically mistakes and, and the fall. You know, we need to be proactive. We need to act to spread God's love, you know, to, to build God's kingdom. And then mentioned about the art and how to enhance love and bring beauty. And then uh, when I was thinking of that, it reminded me of a, a book I read by Eric Fromm called The Art of Loving. He was a psychoanalyst, philosopher type of person, a bit of a Marxist as well. But anyway, he, he wrote some uh, interesting thoughts and he, he talked about uh, a love uh, in, in, in a very nice way. And he, he mentioned there were four elements or four things that he uh, thought made up love. And, and, and that was uh, care, responsibility, respect and knowledge were his you know, sort of core traits to love. And anyway, it's an interesting book, those that read it may know or those haven't uh, interesting uh, and then then thinking about you know how we are born for love and then I started to think well we are you know, also born to love and we also are born to actually end up becoming love just like God uh, and so yeah just uh, reflecting you know, all of the different aspects of love and and uh, and then appreciating uh, my wife even more because she has the capacity to receive more love, uh, and also uh, the the uh, the one that is loved uh, most by God. And so uh, I, I started to think, well, I definitely need to give more love to to her because she can receive it. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Uh, yes, Barbara, go ahead. Uh, Reverend John, as soon as you said that, it came to me immediately that we are both male and female within each of us. So perhaps we, you can love the female side of, of yourself, you know, the, the loving, not so chasing things, but looking after family and loving each other. And maybe that's how, because uh, I know how you feel. You know, for, for <laughs> centuries, women have felt a little bit jealous of men, I guess, but we are both elements within each each of us like heavenly parent so true thank you <laughs> yes we have plenty of time for people to share or to doesn't necessarily have to be about the message, could be something during Chongqing <laughs> One.
Uh, yes, Candice, go ahead. Um, yeah, that's quite quite good this morning about um, because as a woman, you probably all all women would know that they've had to endure quite a bit of suffering from men. <laughs> Sorry, because like I grew up with three brothers, and I wanted to play soccer. These were the days when you couldn't play soccer. And as a woman, you know, as a girl, you could play soccer. But then as soon as it became real, you weren't allowed to play soccer, like official. And like just knowing those things growing up that you're not allowed to do this or as a girl. And it did make me very competitive as a result. <laughs> but the thing is... Um, yeah, you always sort of do know that women are smarter. Sorry. <laughs> In a sense of intuition, maybe. Maybe it's the caring and loving side that gives you a bit more smartness. Because the more I find that more, the more you love, the smarter you become. So anyway, it's 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 not whether or not you're you're male or female, it's actually how much love you have. That's what gives us the edge. And, yeah, we both have male and female, but we, we can never decide, right? And some people even change their bodies because they can't decide if they're male or female. We're actually both. And we have to respect our bodies that have told us that's what we are. You know? I, I think what's happened here is we've, we lack gratitude. Our kids are lacking gratitude. And so the, therefore they're not grateful for their bodies. Because you can't, you, if you're grateful, you can't do anything but respect your body. And I think we need to teach kids gratitude before we can teach them anything. And they're not grateful if our parents are fighting, if they grow up in a fighting environment. Why, are, why should they be grateful? This is, I see it all the time. I see it in my family. All my family have got split, split families. So there's kids to both, to two parents. And it's so devastating for them all in so many ways. Mm. And um, I've just come back from New Zealand where I've seen it in all my brothers. And it's just, you know, it's like, yeah, we've got to teach people about the blessing, what it really means. It. It's not fair on the kids having to, sh you know, like my brother didn't even have a bedroom for his his step his daughter his own daughter, you know, from the first marriage there was you know she had nowhere to live, she still has nowhere to live. It's you know what I mean. They don't feel at home. So I just want to put that in. I mean, it's it's you could do a degree on it, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's really good to um, hear these words. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Candice. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Randall. Just trying to work out how to drop that hand. Okay, good. Um, when uh, I was in Mexico, we were going through the whole thing of, you know, how come we're using the term Heavenly Father? This is back in the... Um, uh, late 70s and the whole thing was maybe it was uh, a bit of protecting the uh, heart, the heavenly mother side of things when the providence means, means sending your children out into the world to suffer and so this is why um, at the time of Jesus it was uh, you know bring the heavenly father the one that would um, you know understand the uh, providence understand the suffering that had to be done by the uh, children that would be, you know, thrown out into, um, uh, you know, martyrdom and things like this. And it's a very harsh type of thing, very difficult for the father, but for the mother, it would be almost impossible. Um, so it was so much of a, uh, a breath of fresh air, you know, a, you know, 
oh, at last we've come to the point where, um, you know, with Foundation Day, we could be saying Heavenly Parent and including the um, uh, motherly side of God with the type of things that the providence had gone through after a lot of the indemnity had been paid. So, um, you know, this is one of the aspects that I thought uh, that was part of the discussion that we were going through. Um, this was when uh, Joy Papal was the missionary there in um, uh, in Mexico. And she was the one with um, Women's Federation that helped with the Middle East Peace Initiative. She was uh, one of the key people there to get that going. Um, also, just wanted to say, uh, one of the activities that I got into yesterday with um, here in Geelong, um, the different Christian groups, uh, so a very ecumenical type of um, activity was the Stations of the Cross. And so the Catholic Church um, arranges that and they do it after their service each year. And this year, because Daylight Saving is still around because the uh, Easter was so early this year, then it was very hot. <laughs> but still about 700 people finished uh, turning up. So I gave a little bit of a photo report in the um, Australia uh, WhatsApp. And so anyway, you can uh, have a look at that. But um, yeah, it was, uh, I made some good contacts there that I'll be, um, you know, continually uh, reaching out to as well. But um, yeah, thanks for that. And this, the talks today were awesome. Um, sometimes some of the kids uh, have gone through the type of schooling that they, they went to. And I, I'm not sure how it was where you guys were, but the um, uh, health uh, representative, like a nurse that was sent in to give different talks to the kids, they were worried about, you know, um, in some areas that uh, there's a lot of teen pregnancy. And so trying to prepare kids for avoiding the teen pregnancy and invertedly stop them wanting to have kids. And so we find that, you know, with some of the families, um, it's taking longer and longer and longer before we're having uh, grandkids from some of our kids because of the way that these nurses and other people were, you know, basically lying to our kids uh, to an extreme to try to stop uh, teen pregnancy. But it, um, you know, gave a very twisted view on, um, you know, what it is for uh, relationships. So we have to, um, yeah, get back into some of this stuff. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Randall. Thank you. Yeah, it's still got a bit of time for anyone's comment. Uh, yes, uh, Reverend Stone, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment on the um, bit about the grandparents. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a new world when when the realm of grandparents opens up in terms of a different uh, a different world of love. Definitely, I can concur with what Father said. <clears throat> I don't know. You're not really sure where it comes from, but you just just really love love the grand grandkids uh, so much, you know. And um, even they do naughty things, but you you just still, um, you know, you can embrace it because your heart is much bigger, you know. Anyway, yeah, it's something for many of you probably to look look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, Debbie, go ahead. Is it okay? Yeah. Just, uh, you can see how the world's changed so much. I remember when I was young, uh, my father wanted my brother to go to university, but he didn't want my sister and I to go because he felt that women's place was at home with the children. So nowadays you can see women who have, you know, they're like CEOs of companies and everything. So the world's changed and women have a, a bit more of a kind of a masculine nature. Uh, 
some women anyway. So yeah, the world's changed a lot since since my since I was young. So that's all. Just just wanted to tell you that. Yeah, thanks, Betty. Uh, I think that's great that the world has changed. <laughs> it's a step in the right way. It's going to keep on changing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to comment at the same same time though. What Debbie's point is correct that women have taken the masculine role and forgotten their embracing role. And if you look at women, they've actually completely cancelled men. And, uh, you know, it, it's just so there was value, as in always, there needed to be a balance back in the home time and there needs to be a balance now. We need to go back to women having a more embracing role. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. It's, uh, it is time now for us to offer our unison prayer, so I'll just share the screen again. Now let's pray together. Thank you.
Uh, Ju, uh, Ju, uh, Ju. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Revenue Tucker, for sharing, and thank you all for coming. Have a great day, and see you all again tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Yes.